Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. Two days ago I received the Fitbit Sense and I've done a test of its sleep prediction accuracy, its step counting accuracy and the heart rate monitor. In this video I will also briefly discuss the EDA, SpO2, ECG and temperature features of the Sense. For the sleep prediction, I compared the Sense against a scientific portable EEG device. I tested the step counting accuracy of the Sense by counting exactly 6,000 steps with a tally counter. Finally, to test the heart rate monitor, I did a cardio workout and I compared the heart rate of the Sense against this Polar H10 chest strap. As always, I don't want to waste your time. So if you're interested in any specific parts, timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Also, this is a first look and these are the first tests. In future videos, I'll do more thorough tests of each of these features. To test the sleep tracking accuracy of the Sense, I wore both the Sense and this scientific portable EEG monitor to bed last night. This tracks your brain waves and your muscle movements. It is called the ZMAX and is used by several of my colleagues in scientific sleep studies. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages and I compared these to the Fitbit Sense's results. Also, during the same night, I wore two Fitbit Charge 4s two Fitbit Charge 3s and a Charge 2 to bed to see how consistent the results are between the different generations of Fitbits. Let's look at those results first. Here you can see my sleep stages over time for both my Fitbit Sense and one of my Fitbit Charge 4s. I went to bed a little bit after midnight and as you can see they generally agree pretty well. So the times that I was awake generally match up except for this part. REM sleep cycles are about at the same moments and also the deep sleep matches pretty well. And if you look at the other Fitbits, so the Fitbit Charge 3, we see it also generally agrees pretty well, except for this REM sleep here in the beginning that it has differently. The Fitbit Charge 2 also shows very similar results. So just looking at these graphs over time, we can see that the sleep prediction of the Sense for this night is very similar to that for the Charge 2, the Charge 3 and the Charge 4. Now we can put this in numbers by comparing each of the Fitbit trackers to the other ones and seeing how well they agree. So there's the Sense. I have two Fitbit Charge 4s that I wore, a Charge 3 and a Charge 2. Now in general, we can see that there's about an 80-85% agreement between the different Fitbit trackers. Now the Sense, if we look at that specifically, we can see it has between an 80 and 87% agreement with the Charge 2, 3 and 4. Now this is really good because in previous videos I've done really thorough scientific tests of the sleep prediction accuracy of different Fitbit models. And since the Sense agrees so well with the other models, I expect it also to be in very good agreement with the scientific EEG monitor. These other Fitbit models I tested with a really large scientific EEG monitor, but let's see how the Sense did with the smaller portable EEG monitor. So on top you see the sleep stages as predicted by the scientific EEG monitor and on the bottom we see the sleep stages as predicted by the Fitbit Sense. And we see there's at least some general agreement. We can see the sleep cycles, so each sleep cycle ends in REM sleep and we can see here one, two, three, four, five sort of sleep cycles that seem to be in agreement between the ZMAX and the Fitbit Sense. Now there are some differences, so the EEG monitor appears to predict a little bit less deep sleep in the beginning and a little bit more REM sleep at the end. Though I must admit this last part here was quite difficult to score because I was spending some time awake and then falling a little bit asleep again. So I do think the Fitbit did score a little bit too much time awake here, but this was also a really difficult time to score. Now let's have a look at the actual numbers. This matrix here shows the agreement between the EEG monitor and the Fitbit Sense and each column, so each vertical line here is 100%. So what I'm saying here is 100% of what was deep sleep 47% of that was also predicted as deep sleep by the Fitbit Sense, but 23 and 29% of that were actually predicted as light sleep and REM sleep. Whereas of 100% of my light sleep, 55% was actually predicted as light sleep also by the Fitbit Sense. And here we can see, for instance, for REM sleep, that it predicted about 39% of what was REM sleep, so about 40% as actual REM sleep. And we can see out of all of the time that I spent awake, 75% was indeed predicted as awake by the Sense as well. And one good sign is that on the diagonal here are the highest numbers of each column. 
So deep sleep was most often predicted as deep sleep. Light sleep was most often predicted as light sleep. REM sleep as REM sleep and awake as awake. And I should mention, this is a first preliminary test. I will do a full test with more nights later to make sure that this was not a one-off night, but it did well overall. To test the step counting accuracy of the sense, I wore it on both my left arm and my right arm, taking exactly 2000 steps each time as I counted it with this tally counter. Now, to make sure that these results were not just valid for me, but also for another person, I asked a friend to join me and she took exactly 1000 steps wearing the sense on her left arm and her right arm. In addition, to check its consistency with other generations of Fitbits, at the same time, I also wore two Fitbit Charge 4s, one Fitbit Charge 3 and a Fitbit Charge 2. And I also wore them sometimes on my right hand and my left hand to see if that had any influence. For the step test, I took exactly 2000 steps as counted with this tally counter. Now let's have a look at the results. So these are the actual steps counted by the Fitbits. Looking at this overall, I would say all Fitbits perform about equally well. They are slightly overcounting and overcounting a bit more on my right hand than my left hand. Looking specifically at the sense, we see it counts about 150 steps too much on my right hand and about 90 too much on my left hand. Now let's look at how it did for my friend. So looking at the steps for my friend, the results are about the same, though there is also some undercounting instead of overcounting. So the sense on her right hand undercounted a bit and on her left hand overcounted a bit. And it also is a bit different for different trackers. Though looking at this picture overall, I would say that the Fitbit Sense and also all the other Fitbits do pretty well at counting steps when you're walking. I've seen this before that for me there's a slight overcounting, but for my friend it appears to be a bit better and a bit closer to the actual thousand steps that she took. So overall I'm pretty satisfied with this. However, there's one last set of numbers I want to show you, these numbers here. So what I've seen in the past is that Fitbits tend to count steps when they're not supposed to count steps. For me that happens most often when I'm biking and on my stationary bike. So what I checked here is to see how many steps were added to my total balance of the day during my stationary bike exercise and during weightlifting. So this took about 41 minutes and 37 minutes. And we see that especially on the stationary bike, I get a lot of steps. And the Sense and also all of these other trackers knew I was on a stationary bike and still they counted steps. So if we convert that to steps per minute, we see that the Sense gives me about 37 steps per minute on my stationary bike, while I indicated on the device that I was on a stationary bike, which makes it quite impossible to do any actual steps. And weightlifting is of course a lot better, this is negligible. So that's why at the end of the day, for all my Fitbits, and which also appears to be true for the Fitbit Sense, I get a lot of extra steps that I didn't actually take because I was doing different exercises that were not walking. In one of my previous videos about the Withing scan watch, one of the major competitors of the Fitbit Sense, I found that the scan watch had major problems with accurate heart rate tracking, especially during exercise. To test if the Fitbit Sense has similar problems, I did a cardio workout using both the Polar H10 chest strap, which is generally considered one of the most accurate heart rate monitors available to consumers, and the Fitbit Sense, and I compared the two heart rates. So here you can see the heart rate. On top is the heart rate according to the Polar H10 chest strap, and on the bottom, the heart rate according to the Fitbit Sense. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to extract the data yet from the Fitbit, so the raw data wasn't available to me yet, so I had to make do with these plots here. Now, what we can see is that the Fitbit nicely picked up on all the four segments of my training, and that the top and lower heart rate appear to agree pretty well. Now, this is different than what I saw, for instance, in my tests of the Withing Scan Watch, which would often record half the heart rate for some of these sessions. Now, of course, I need to do many more tests over the coming weeks to see if these results are consistent, but at least this is the first indication that the heart rate measurements of the Fitbit Sense are pretty good. The Sense also tracks changes in skin temperature, which it will report in the morning as deviations from your normal baseline. And if this is elevated, this could be an indication of fever, as you might get with COVID-19. Now, you actually need three nights of sleep before Fitbit calculates a baseline, so I cannot show you this yet. But when I went into the raw data, it seems as though the sense measures your skin temperature every minute throughout the day as well. Though of course, during the day, your skin temperature might be influenced more by your surroundings than during the night. The sense also measures SpO2 or oxygen saturation throughout the night, which is basically an indication of how much oxygen there is in your blood. It doesn't measure the actual values of your oxygen saturation, but it measures something called estimated oxygen variation. So these are the changes over time. And if you have high variations, this might be linked to breathing issues. You can also get actual SpO2 values of your night, but for that you need to install a special clock face. 
Now this clock phase reports the average SPO2 value of your night and the range of the values that you had. Another important new feature of the sense is the electrodermal activity sensor or EDA sensor, which monitors for EDA responses. These are basically changes in the electrical conductance of the skin, which could indicate stress. And I discussed this in last week's video. You put your hand on the watch, making contact with the two electrodes, and the sense reports the number of these EDA responses you have in a scan of two minutes, or you can do a longer scan. And the more of these responses you have, the higher the chance that you are stressed. Fitbit also added an electrocardiogram or ECG sensor to the sense, which can detect atrial fibrillation. This feature has not been activated yet, but it should be available somewhere next month. So stay tuned for updates on that. Overall, my first results indicate that the sleep tracking, heart rate monitoring and step counting of the sense are about as good as you find in other Fitbit devices. I have done extensive sleep testing of other Fitbits and they appear to be among some of the best sleep trackers you can find in fitness and smartwatches, which is a really good indication for the sleep tracking of the sense. The heart rate measurements of the Fitbit Sense appear to be pretty solid and as I saw before for the Fitbit Charge 2 and Charge 3, Fitbits do tend to really overcount the number of steps you get in a day. It is mainly these new features that the Fitbit Sense has added that make it stand apart from other Fitbits. Especially if future tests show that the ECG, temperature and EDA sensors prove to be accurate, I think the Sense is really an improvement compared to the other Fitbits currently on the market. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. For now, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.